It's Matthew Matt. I'm going to talk about the Common Core Mathematics and specifically what the emphasis is in the kindergarten grades. They talk about two main areas or two critical areas for kindergarten. The first is about developing an understanding, developing an understanding of number, and the second is describing shapes um, and the world around us in terms of shapes. Uh, the big the point they clarify is that number one really should be the main focus in kindergarten. That's where most of the time should be spent. Not all, but most of it. So I'm going to start the video by talking about number and how we can think about that in the kindergarten uh, grades. Um, and specifically, there's three subcomponents I'm going to talk about. I'm going to talk about the role of counting. I'm going to talk about number talks. And I'm going to talk about story problems. All right, so starting with counting, uh, one of the biggest things you should just be doing is using counting books and reading counting books and counting with them. I have a few examples um, and I will list them in the description below. So Moja means one, which is a Swahili counting book. Um, and the other thing I'll say, I have several books here and then I have another book I mentioned later. You can search for most of these on YouTube and find someone reading them aloud. So if you don't have the book, you can still have access to it by looking for them on YouTube and finding a read aloud for them. Um, Eric Carl's one, two, three to the zoo. Each orange had eight slices is another great book, and it also can connect to some of the ideas about story problems that I have later in the video. Um, but there's lots of counting opportunities in this book. Twelve ways to get eleven and ten black dots are nice ones for thinking about different ways to make numbers or put them together. When you're thinking about counting books, you want to think about both counting forwards and backwards. You can consider going through the book backwards or just counting backwards after you finish. It is nice to count past 10. Most counting books only go up to 10, but it is nice to count past 10 because 10 is kind of a roadblock for a lot of kids. So knowing what comes next, that it's 10, 11, 12, 13, just going a little bit further. Um, but the reason it's important to go both forwards and backwards is that as kids develop their math knowledge, it's important to know the number that comes before. A lot of their strategies will start to rely on counting backwards, saying so they need to be able to do that. Um, you can think about if you want to draw how kids are working on or you have some tools for kids if they're working on problems with you, you can think about how to represent them. So the number line is one way and um, in kindergarten you'll obviously be using the right side more with the positive numbers, but it's not bad for them to have seen negative numbers. And so you could represent stories or um, the different points in a story on a number line. Another tool you might consider having is a hundreds, uh, 120s chart. So this is a chart that goes from 1 to 120. It's good for kids to be able to use to count and help solve problems. Uh, it also helps with counting backwards. Uh, sometimes people do a 120 chart with some of the numbers missing and kids fill them in based on how the chart is structured. So those are some ways something like that can be used. You can search for one online. All right, I want to talk a little bit about number talks. Depending on the school your kid goes to, they may have already done number talks. Uh, they're basically short warm-up activities for thinking about math and number in different ways. With young kids in kindergarten, they really should just be doing like arrangements of dots. And the question is, how many dots and how do you know? And the emphasis is more on the different ways we can think about the number, not on the answer so much. Uh, if you search for dot cards, number talks, you'll be able to find some examples. So in this arrangement, for instance, uh, we can see the number five, but we can see in a lot of different ways. Maybe you saw two and two and one. Uh, maybe you counted them, one, two, three, four, five. Maybe you saw four and one because that four looks kind of like a die and you're familiar with that shape. Maybe you saw a group of three and a group of two. Maybe you thought of it as two groups of three, so six, and then minus that one that wasn't really there. There's lots of ways to think about it and just saying, how many dots did you see? How do you know? You know, I thought of it this way. Does that work? Is there another way we could think about it? So just those kinds of explorative conversations. Finally, story problems. Story problems is an area that is often a stressful area for a lot of kids in math, especially the further we go. And that's really unfortunate because it turns out that young kids are really good at solving story problems. And in fact, stories is one of the main ways they should be introduced to numbers and thinking about how to add and subtract numbers, how to put them together and take them apart. Um, and they're really quite good at this. It's just uh, because of the way math is often taught in school, so the story problems come in a way that are often difficult. But when we teach it in a way that builds on what we know about kids thinking, they're really a great way for um, helping kids think about number. So really, children really like to act out simple stories. So here's an example of a st simple story. There are four birds at the park. 
three more birds show up, now how many birds are there? It's a nice story, it's got a beginning, the four birds at the park, it's got a middle, three more birds show up, and it's got an ending where we wanna know how many birds there are now. So clear structure, beginning, middle, end. Kids like to act these kinds of problems out. Um, I would provide kids with blocks or paper and pencil to draw a picture on or something like that so they can work on it. A common strategy that young kids invent all on their own without ever being told is the following. They'll count out four objects if they have blocks or toys or they'll make four marks on a paper and then they'll do three more for the three more that show up and then they will count all of their objects or marks on the paper. So they'll have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and that's how they'll find the answer. And what they've done really follows the story. They like to act out the story just like it happened, and that's what the strategy was. Uh, kindergartners do not need to be writing equations, but if you want to model an equation like this and look for and say, you know, that's great. Here's how a mathematician would write what you just did. The equation that goes with this is 4 plus 3 equals box, and now we know we can put a 7 in that box. Here's a slightly harder problem, same basic situation. There are four kids at the park, some more birds show up, now there are seven birds. How many birds showed up? It's the same structure, there's a beginning, the four birds, there's a middle, but now we don't know what happened in the middle of the story, and there are seven birds at the end, there's the end. So uh, because what we don't know is in the middle of the story, it makes it a little harder for kids. Uh, it's a little more advanced thinking because they have to plan ahead more. A common strategy for this would look like getting out four objects um, or four blocks or four marks on the paper. And then they have to plan a little bit ahead. They might leave a little space or something like that. And they would go, so they've counted one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And they're going to stop because they got to seven, which is the end of the story and then they have to go back and recount these. And again, this is a strategy kids in all over the world will invent all on their own without being told how to do it. They just need exposure to these kinds of problems and opportunity to work on them. Now, a lot of us as adults might think of this as a subtraction problem. We might think seven minus four equals three, but the child still followed the story. They started with the beginning, they did the middle until they got to the end of seven and then they went back and counted the middle. So an equation that really matches their thinking looks like this, where we have four plus something, the birds that show up, equals seven. And now we know that a three could go in that box. A couple points about using story problems. Oh, and just to clarify, you could ask similar story problems that involve takeaway situations. I had, there were 10 birds at the park, three of them flew away, now how many are there? And again, remembering if it has a clear beginning, middle, end, it's usually easier. And if the end is what we don't know, that's the easiest. If the middle is not known, it's a little bit harder. I wouldn't typically give worry about giving kids problems where the beginning is unknown. Those tend to be much harder, and they could come a little later. Uh, story problems can be spoken instead of written, so it's, they don't have to be able to read the problem. You could just say it to them and just repeat any information they need, repeat it as many times as they need. It's just about them thinking about and exploring. You should use things or write problems about things your kids like. If they're really into Lego, then tell a story about Lego blocks, or if they like to collect stones, or make long uh, train cars, or things like that. So use objects that they have or like or are familiar with. Um, you should encourage them to use blocks, or if it's actually about stones in their stone collection, then they can use those to draw pictures, to just ask them, what's happening in the story? Can you show me what's going on? Um, and then the big idea is that it's really about exploring. It's not about memorizing. It's not about the answer so much as exploring and talking about your thinking. So that was uh, the first part of my video on um, the math expectations for kindergarten and the Common Core. Uh, for the next part about shape, uh, click on the next video.